As Europe is riddled with doubt and its economy suffers, here in Africa it's green for go. Some states have registered remarkable economic growth. Still, many problems persist. Poverty, a population explosion, health and security issues and the need for good governance. But the Africans are not turning their backs on the problems. Here they exchange ideas and initiate and develop programs. The New York Forum Africa in Libreville, Gabon is a showcase for Afro-optimism. The emergence of African development concentrates on the capital I. Independence, for example. The fight against violence, the battle to end corruption and the flow of capital out of the continent. As much as 1.3 billion US dollars leaves. That's four times the external debt of Africa. Africa is not a coherent entity, but a mosaic of 54 countries made up of 1,500 ethnic groupings. Africa needs geostrategic innovation to impose itself on the international stage. You cannot have peace and security without justice. So in all of these efforts that we are making on the continent, on development, on economic development, financial, we must factor in the fact that you must have justice, you must have rule of law, you must have accountability. This is an atmosphere in which development can take place. I think all African and international investors have made it plain to decision makers that we need to accelerate reforms to our judicial system. Economies like Nigeria are growing at rates that the world has never seen before. So the truth is that no one country can re lead this rise. A grouping of African countries need to get together and make this rise a reality. And I've been calling for a long time for a collaboration between the major econo economies of Africa. A, a collaboration which is similar to the collaboration that makes BRICS work. I've been talking about a pan-African BRICS. I've been talking about a BRICS concept that brings these large economies together and allows them to create policy with which they can interface with outside investors and other BRICS countries. The continent posted an annual growth of close to 5% over the last decade. But for that growth to impact on the wider population, infrastructure must be improved. With 200 million people aged between 15 and 24, Africa has the youngest population in the world and it will double by 2045. It's therefore important to integrate growth to help the 150 million unemployed and African leaders must invest. We have the infrastructure deficit, that is clear. This lack damages intra-African trade, so it's important for us. To be able to join up the market is vital for us. <laughs> If our continent began a real overhaul of governance while strengthening its institutional framework and deal with the deficits of infrastructure, then we will be able to move towards double-digit growth. But for entrepreneurs to be about, we need for the legal uh, framework to be right. We need business-friendly environment. So, um, and for that to happen, I need for these governments to really be motivated in terms of ch reforming the systems. And that's all I need from them. They don't have to wait for the West for that. They don't have to wait for anyone. It is simply, we sit down, let's look at how can we make our country business-friendly. And then if they make it business-friendly, get out of my way, then more of us will come and we will do what we do. We start companies and we create jobs and then that's going to happen. The rise of Africa will happen that way. Former advisor to the Clinton and Obama administrations, Larry Summers said, African development is the most promising of the 21st century. Senegal can now borrow at a lower rate than Greece, Ghana at a lower rate than Ireland and Gabon at a lower rate than Belgium.